People are drawn to elephants because of shared similarities between the species. I think it's really hard not to be captivated by them and not to just stop and stare. And then you have to remind yourself, oh, I need to collect data. My name is Dr. Daniela Shusid, and I'm an assistant professor at Indiana University. All right, so we're going to target a sub-adult or adult female. I'm now finishing my third trip to Zambia. I think there's a lot of value in studying elephants and understanding how are they able to reach similar lifespans to certain human populations. At the end of the day, it's really about promoting elephant conservation and elephant and human coexistence together. Between Indiana University, myself, my funding organization, National Institute on Aging, as well as Game Rangers International, we're really trying to create a holistic approach, not just towards elephant research and conservation, but really supporting capacity building around the area that we work in. You know, conservation efforts are actually helping in a way to, you know, uh, create a balance between the people and uh, wildlife. Again, the perfect scenario, this year you'll collect the samples, next year you'll collect samples from the same elephant, and then we can see, okay, there's a change or not change. This is a game of patience. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a, a game, game of, of patience. patience. So for the collaring event, it is a lot of logistics, it requires a lot of personnel. So where we are here in Kafui National Park, there's a lot of thickets, so it's not really feasible to collar them from a truck. So we have our experienced pilot. We also have a principal veterinarian, so that's the top vet for the country, and that's Dr. Innocent Ngombwa. And then we have folks in, our, in my team, as well as individuals from Game Rangers International. So these collars, they help us get to the elephants so that we can collect all this data that we need. So we wanted to take this opportunity to make sure that everyone on my team knows how to collect all the biological samples and knows how to put on and take off a GPS collar on an elephant. Some samples are much easier to collect than others. So we collect dung from all our elephants, that's very straightforward. We're also trying to collect urine swabs within their nostrils, uh, tail hair as well, ticks whenever possible, uh, tissue biopsies, that's to look at changes in the DNA and that gets at our pace of aging. So an elephant may be 20 years of age, but because of the extreme stressor they experienced early in life that could have advanced their age. So even though they're 20, internally their physiology is operating maybe like a 25 year old or a 30 year old. Daniela, she, she first of all trained me, relying on the skill sets that I already had. There was a need for us to have one extra person and then that's when uh, we employed another research assistant under her program. And I sort of, uh, slightly moved to more of the coordination aspect. I have such an amazing team. It was important to me to find folks that would also benefit their career trajectory, adding more tools to their toolbox. What Daniela is doing now, you know, it's exciting to see, you know, the people that she's training, such that even when she's back at Indiana University, you know, she can simply, if at all she wants any sample, you know, uh, recollected, she can simply call Zambia and will be able to collect and, you know, send that sample to her. I want to continue to expand this project and grow this project to include additional elephants from additional parks as well and look at different measurements and some of those are molecular, uh, some of those are behavioral, some of those are more on the cognitive aspect. And when you disrupt the fabrics of elephant society, what does that do to an elephant? Then we could have a better understanding of future human activities, so where should we put roads, how should we develop, how should we protect the land. If we don't meet the needs of our communities, we're not going to be able to meet the needs of the wildlife, including elephants. How can we have more of a coexistence between the two species?